Hey guys, welcome back to Three Generations Restoration. Today I got a how-to video on how to make spark plug wires. We kind of got a little bit of a wire catastrophe going on here. Um, this tractor here was in a fire and all the plugs need redone. So you can kind of see here, that's melted. This one's in half. This one broke off. So we're going to go ahead and start replacing these. This tractor did run with all these, but it's better just to put new in. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Alright, so we're on the bench here and the first thing you're going to want to do is take some measurements here. So I got all four plug wires and the coil wire and you're going to want to measure all of them and then cut them to size as you can see here that I've already done. I just had a tape measure over there and I was cutting these to size. And then you are going to need a tool to do this. You probably could get away with doing these with nippers. but this tool here makes whole life a lot easier. Uh, this is a Heistronica, but you can get these off of Jags or off of any internet site. All you have to do is search up spark plug wire crimpers. So first thing we're gonna do is we are going to want to put these on each wire. And in our case, we're only gonna be doing it on one side. That's because I want to go original look, so we're going to go original look. So all we do need is boots on one side. So we'll go ahead and put boots on one side. Um, what might make the boots easier to slip on will be soap. So let's go ahead and start slipping them on. Okay, guys, so I got, here's a boot. We got one, two, three, four. We're going to need four boots, and we're going to want a coil boot. The only difference is, is your coil boot will be a little larger in size. So like I said before, we're only going to need them on one side. And soapy water sometimes helps, but sometimes you might just get lucky like that and just slide it on. So we'll do that on every one of these. Just like that. These ones actually aren't too bad. They're going on pretty decently. I do have to make sure that I have the coil wire with the right size. And I believe this is my coil wire. All right, so here's this is my coil wire. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide the big boot on. Just like that. We're going to go ahead and slide this boot on, just like that. Okay, guys, so now what we're going to do is we're going to do this on each side. It's essentially we're just crimping off or uh, we're disconnecting some of the insulation off of the plug wires with our strippers, and we're going to want to do that on both sides, so one on each side, and then we are going to then fold them over. I'll show you when we get to it, but we want to strip every one. And like I said, you want about a half inch. Here's about as much as I took off. About a half inch is what you want, so. Okay guys, so we got every, every wire here stripped. We got all the copper bearing. And I guess this is a special note here is I will never ever buy plugs with the graphite wire or whatever you guys call it. Um, always, always go with the copper wire insulation. You will never have problems with it. We've always ran into a few tractors that had wires like this and we would actually have engines that would have a miss to the one and be caused by 
um, electricity not being able to flow through the graphite wires. Another thing too I wanted to point out is when you're going to strip, you can kind of see it here. This is the part of the tool you want to use. And if you're close to half an inch, you're good. You just want to have a good amount of copper out. So now what we're going to do is we're going to twist the wire, kind of get it a little twisted. That way it's more stable and we are going to fold them over onto the insulation. So we're going to go ahead and do that now and we'll meet you guys back here. All right, so we're back. We have each wire uh, twisted and folded over like I, like I showed you. It looks like I missed one here, so we'll go ahead and fold that down. But we got each wire twisted and folded. So now what we're going to do is we are going to sort all 10 of these brass, I guess you would call them where they plug into the plugs and the distributor cap. We're going to sort these out as in to plug or to cap end, but an easy way to distinguish the two is you can totally look at them above. This one on the left has a bigger tapered end to it, and this one on the right, more of a flat finish. The one on the left is going to be the one for your rotor or your distributor cap or magneto, whatever the case may be, and the right one is going to be for your plugs. So I'm going to sort these out and then I'm going to show you guys how to crimp them on. All right, so I got my 10 plug things sorted out. Um, you'll know you'll have 10 because we have a four cylinder engine. We're going to have four here on the actual plugs, four on the rotor and two on the coil. So total of 10. Now six cylinder will be just two more or four more because you got two more cylinders to do so we're only going to be in need of 10 so I'm going to set you guys down and I am going to show you how to I'm going to show you guys how to crimp on these plug ends so this is the boot end this is the end that's going to be going into this into the distributor cap or the magneto one of the two this is going to be the plug you're going to want, plug end, like I was saying before. Now, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to face the upper hump of this plug onto the copper, just like that. And you kind of want to have this thing sticking out a little bit, not too much, but you want to have it sticking out just enough. And then you're going to take your crimpers and you can kind of see this area here this is where you're going to want to crimp two bottom ends you're going to want them in there and it will fold this thing down so all right i kind of got it started now it was a little difficult with the camera we're going to go ahead and stick our boot back in just enough just like that we want all the copper to go in you want to pull it out just a tad bit, just like that. We're going to go ahead and crimp it down, just like that. And there you go, there is the boot end. We can just go ahead and slide that down. You want a little bit facing out, just like that. So we can go ahead and do that on each side of the boot end. So we'll go ahead and load another one up. And another, another thing you can do is you can squeeze this a little bit, set them down in, kind of get it started a little bit. Sometimes you got to play around a little bit and experiment, see if you get it your own way. But we're going to go ahead and set it in like that. So there's another one. So we will get another boot end. Okay, we're going to go ahead and crimp this one down now. And another thing too you should do is give it a gentle pull. It should not fall off. Ours didn't. So that's a good thing. So we got two done. We got our coil and one of our plugs. I will meet you guys back here 
I'm gonna get them all done. You just gotta repeat the process. All right, guys, so we got one, two, three, four, five. We got five on, on the boot end. So we are gonna go ahead now and do the plug end. Now the plug end doesn't have a boot, so you're gonna wanna make extra sure that you are crimping correctly. All right, guys, so we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing for this. We're gonna go ahead and you're gonna need to probably squeeze these in a little as you go. Um, we're gonna load up the tool, get it nice and flush. All right, we're gonna load up our first plug wire, push it in flush, just like that. All right, we're gonna go ahead and crimp her down. Make sure all your copper's in, like that. So this is what you kinda are looking for. Um, make sure you do your pull test and make sure this doesn't fall off. So we're gonna go ahead and repeat this process on every other end. So that's what we're gonna do now. All right, one, one thing I failed to mention is I figured out why we got this extra boot. I need it for the coil. So I'm gonna take this and we're gonna carefully slide this other end on. The coil has two boots on it and I kind of forgot about that. So, but I'm gonna finish up crimping. This is the last one. All right, so all of them are done. We're crimped. We got boots on everything. <laughs> now we're gonna take all this off and put new on. So. Let's go ahead and do that. All right, so we're gonna we're just gonna start. We're gonna start with this one. Pull it off. We'll make our way around. Oh yeah, she clicked right in. Sounded pretty good too. So there's there's number four. We'll go ahead and do this one here. This is number three. Plug this in. Should be hearing a snap too when you click it in. Just like that. Plug this in too. I'll say number four is by far the worst one. It's pretty, pretty shoddy. Plug the plugger in. Snaps right in, that's what we want. We'll go ahead and replace the final one. This one here is in pretty bad shape as well. You can hear them snapping in, which is really good. All right, so there's all the plugs. Now we're gonna go ahead and put the coil wire on. I'm sure you guys noticed you got the big end and the small end. Small end goes on the cap. Big end goes on the bottom. You may have to make this one on the bottom for the coil a hair bigger, just because the coil's got a bigger opening. And you can do that with a screwdriver. So I opened it up a little bit. We're gonna test fit it now. Slides right in with a little resistance. That's just what we want. And we'll slide the boot over. What she ain't wanting to go. There we go. All right. Just like that, we got new plug wires on this old Alice whole lot better than what came off so hopefully this helped anyone who was interested in wondering how to make plug wires bought these online these are a pretty good tool to have adjustable as well so really good tool I think it was like 30 bucks does the job for this tractor so if you guys like this video and are interested in more tutorials please subscribe thanks for watching